And now for something different. I like to talk about little corners of music theory on here, but considering I'm a guitar teacher, I figured I'd better talk about guitar sometimes. Today I want to talk about basic classical guitar technique. What we call classical guitar is a style of guitar playing that developed around the time the guitar as we know it was invented, sometime between 1780 and 1820. That is, a plucked string instrument with metal frets and six single strings. There's been a lot of evolution in instrument construction since then, but nowadays classical guitar is generally played on acoustic guitars with nylon or carbon strings and a Torres style body. Development of reliable technique is huge when studying classical guitar. I'm just going to walk through the basics. Part 1. How to sit. Playing with good posture is extremely important in classical guitar. Bad posture can actually make your technique suffer quite a bit, but don't take it from me. Take it from your back. First, you need a chair. Chairs without arms are preferred, but ideally it should be of a height so that when you sit in it, the tops of your thighs are about parallel with the floor. Put your feet flat on the floor, square your shoulders over your hips, sit tall, but relaxed. Next, you need a guitar footstool or something sturdy to put your left foot on. The footstool should be set high enough so that when you put your foot on it, your knee is about even with your stomach and your left leg should point straight ahead. Next, open your right hip so that your thigh points no more than 45 degrees to your right. Grab your guitar and rest it on your left leg. Let it lean back a little so that the back of the upper bout rests against your chest. The tail of the guitar should rest on the inside of your right thigh as if the strings are pointing to it. Place your right fingers on the strings around the sound hole and let your forearm come to rest on the lower bout. To check everything, the neck of the guitar should be at a pretty steep angle to the floor, about 45 degrees. The headstock should be at about eye level. The neck should also point a bit forward from you rather than straight off to your left. For me, it's about 45 degrees forward. There should be four contact points between you and the guitar. Left thigh, right thigh, chest, and your right forearm. Your left hand shouldn't support the guitar at all. That's how you sit. Part two, the left hand. Obviously, if you play lefty, just mirror everything I'm talking about. Take your left hand and make a fist so that the tips of your fingers are buried into your palm. The top of your wrist should be straight. Imagine you're lifting weights. Relax it, but don't let your wrist fall. The neck should just slot right in there. To get a feel for this, put your fingers on frets five, six, seven, and eight on the G string. Press in and let the weight of your arm do most of the work. Your thumb should not be squeezing the back of the neck. It should just rest there for balance. Your knuckles should be parallel with the side of the neck. You wanna wedge an imaginary cigar in there. And most importantly, your wrist should not be kinked. Straight wrist. Part three, the right hand. Make a fist with your right hand, but this time don't bury your fingertips in your palm. Point your fingers down the length of your arm. Relax it and let your fingers hang. You can let your wrist fall slightly, just don't droop it like that. Now the traditional names for your right hand fingers are P, I, M, and A. Your pinky is C, but you're not really gonna use it. Take P and place it on the A string, and then I, M, and A and place them on the three treble strings. Then bring your forearm back to rest on the lower bout. Your right arm should make about a 45 degree angle with the strings. There's a lot of 45 degree angles involved here. When you pluck, you prepare a finger on a string and you drive it with the big knuckle, bringing the finger back up and away from the string, even so far as to let the finger make contact with your palm. When you pluck with P, your finger comes up and away, often making contact with the side of your eye finger, almost making an X like that. Most of the time you're going to be plucking at an angle rather than plucking straight on like this. Plucking at different points along the string will produce different tone colors, but usually your home position is right kind of half covering the sound hole. Part 3B, fingernails. Playing with grown out fingernails on your right hand is pretty crucial for good tone production. Playing with plastic or metal finger picks is ill-advised. I won't get too deep into fingernails, that's a whole other topic. So that's basically it, and I do mean basically. I'm not gonna go much deeper than that on a primer video like this, but that much should give you a good idea of the basic approach. There is a rich history of music written for the guitar and it is extremely gratifying to play. With early 19th century music from composers like Fernando Sor, Cuban composer Leo Brower, to 
some more modern complex music like the blue guitar by Michael Tippett. To me, it's like the pinnacle of guitar playing because you're extracting the instrument's potential to produce a complete musical texture with a bass line, a melody, and chordal textures in between. As someone who started on electric guitar, studying classical guitar has produced tons of benefits in all of my playing and has only made me love the guitar as an instrument even more. I will say, if you do decide you want to learn classical guitar, I highly, highly recommend you seek out a teacher because it's a difficult area of music to navigate on your own. With that, thank you for watching if you made it this far, and I will see you next week.